The idea of the atom came out of a thought experiment in around 400 BC. Democritus wondered what would happen if one were to cut something in half forever. He figured it simply couldn't be done because eventually you would get to a piece of that material that would be indivisible. He called it atmos, which means uncuttable. It wasn't until the early 1800s that we had proof of atoms, thanks to John Dalton, and it wasn't even until 1906 that J.J. Thompson won his Nobel Peace Prize for the discovery of electrons. Now we know that atoms can be further divided. The pieces of an atom are protons, neutrons, and electrons, but how does each piece influence the functionality of an atom and the overall material that it makes up? Let's take a look at the proton first. The proton resides in the center, otherwise known as the nucleus of the atom. As the number of protons change, the identity of the material changes. If there's one proton in the nucleus, then in our world, we get a highly flammable and dangerous gas called hydrogen. But if we were to add just one more, suddenly the hydrogen transforms into helium, which is very stable and used in airships. And we can just keep adding protons and we get all sorts of different things like diamonds, gold, and super strong magnets. How much stuff can we make just by adding protons? Eh, about 118. But none of these, except hydrogen, would be possible without the unsung hero, the neutron. It also resides in the nucleus and, well, it really just sits there. What a relief. All these positive protons don't actually want to be so near each other. But the neutron, with its uncharged nature, convinces them to stick around. Take a look at this graph. The number of protons in a nucleus is on the x-axis, and the number of neutrons in a nucleus is on the y-axis. If the ratio of the two were perfectly one-to-one, -one, then we would get this red line for the 118 elements. But nature isn't like that. Instead, it favors more neutrons, as shown by the yellow line. Uranium is a great example of an element without enough neutrons. If it had just a couple more, its nucleus wouldn't fall apart in a process called radioactivity. And that leaves just the smallest component for last, which is the electron. And this one is the most important atomic component to a chemist. Atoms are always giving, taking, and sharing electrons with one another. Each time this happens, a completely brand new material is born. If you thought 118 things was a lot of things, well what do you think about an infinite number of materials? Chemists are all about trying to understand what a new material can be made of and what their physical properties will be in order to better mankind. And in order to do that, we have to listen to the little guys. Hey there, thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to see more cool chemistry content like this, then please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Until next time.